welcome to the day one of Bank on Washington Week. I'm Tracy Godat. I'm the Executive Director of the Financial Education Public-Private Partnership. And I want to introduce to you Lisa Bullockson. She's an educator of East Valley High School in Spokane, Washington. Lisa's a very experienced educator of fi personal finance, as well as she serves as a FEP fellow, which is our mentor teachers. Um, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us here today for supporting Bank on Washington Week. Our theme this week is the magic of banking, and I know you know a little bit about that. Um, I know you have a passion for personal finance, so I'd like you first to describe how being unbanked puts households at a disadvantage, especially today with the challenges of the COVID-19 and businesses not accepting cash. I, I think that's the part that really scares me. With being unbanked, um, there could be two things. One, if the family had no emergency fund and no way to help protect themselves until stimulus checks hopefully came through or unemployment, they had no way to get food for their families. That's the reason we're seeing these long lines at food banks. But also with being unbanked, even if someone had been really responsible, had some money put under the mattress or in the coffee can, now they can't use that cash. How scary is that to have done everything right and have that ability and you can't use that to feed your family? Um, and these are the parts that at least if they had been banked, because our banks still have the drive up, they could have put their cash into the bank account and then pulled it out there, even if they prefer to use cash. But by not having that link, it really hurt these families. Yeah, you're right. You're so, so right. So you and your students participated in our Bank on Washington Film Festival last fall. So what first intrigued you enough to present this opportunity to your students? It was the opportunity for a relevant project that was going to be you know, judged um, by a professional and authentic audience. Students get tired of me deciding what's right, what's wrong in the world, and I think at times they even begin to go, yeah, it's just the teacher. This gives them an opportunity to see what the real world, what employers, um, what professional people take as important and how their work measures up for what the life after high school is going to expect of them. Um, so it gives them an opportunity to bring the real world and even outside of Spokane into my classroom, which was really important for my students. That's great. I love that. Uh, how did you engage your students in this project? And secondly, how did you address barriers about being unbanked in Washington State? Well, it was a great opportunity because of the prize money. I'll be honest, the very first way that we brought it to the classroom was it was an opportunity to be in a competition, which Everyone loves a competition. It's a game. Um, it was a video, so the students love the idea of doing something with technology and videos. And thirdly, that with the prize money, because we were thinking positively, mm -hmm. that we could have an opportunity now as a finance class to decide how we were going to utilize that money to provide another opportunity for our students. Um, so it just allowed dreaming about what we could do with the money. It allowed us to bring in some really excitement and the students just jumped right up to it, that it was artistic and it was a competition. That is great. And this is a good chance to point out, they had two weeks to put this together. So next, when you tell the process, I want people to keep in mind, two weeks was a very short turnaround and you did a lot of great things in just a short two weeks. So. With that, what was the process the students took in identifying solutions to having, to being unbanked in Washington State? And secondly, what was the process they took for the contest? Yeah, so we started it off as a whole um, class opportunity. Um, so we discussed what being unbanked was and what the terminology was. Um, and we did a little bit, you know, we did brainstorming together as a class. The kids had opportunities to go do some little bit of research. I wanted to make sure that all the terminology, we leveled the playing field. I have a, you know, higher percentage because I love to work with special ed and 504 in my class than some teachers do, um, but it just levels the field for all students to have an opportunity. And so then once we um, introduced as a whole class and discussed the entire project and the expectations, then we began to brainstorm creative ideas um, at a very high level on what would meet the expectations. So we just started throwing out ideas and writing them on whiteboards. And then you go, did that meet the expectations kind of or not? 
From there, the students were divided into teams and they each were going to basically compete as a class to brainstorm, come up with an idea and prototype. So they had to learn what the term prototype meant and part of the project um, process and project management. And so then they had to present their prototypes. So they had to do presentation and communication skills um, and find marketing reasons. Why is theirs better than somebody else? And so they each presented their products, uh, their prototypes. And then we, as a class, they each um, voted on the top two because they knew the top two were going to get to move on and the others weren't. Then those we talked about as a class, what are all the project steps that need to be done within this two week time frame that we had. So it was a very tight time frame. And, you know, definitely I gave them some guidance about making sure they don't work to the end or we leave some quality assurance time in there and rework time. And we should plan to kind of deliver a day ahead of time in case you run into formatting issues, which we did, <laughs> um, and help them understand how all of that works out and that even problems are learning opportunities. Then the, I left out and I have a classroom right next to mine that's empty. So the team started working there for two weeks. So I taught them some time management and, you know, they had to be self-reliant and making sure that they were meeting their goals um, each day to work on. And the rest of the class, we did a unit on philanthropy for two weeks. So it was a great opportunity for them to look about that. We connected in unbanked now and then with that. But it was just a great way to learn to care about the community. Um, so they had an opportunity to learn while the others were really able to focus every day. I didn't want this to be something they had to do after school and in evenings mm -hmm. because many of my students don't have transportation, they have jobs, they have other opportunities, and they didn't want that to stop anyone from being able to participate. But I just thought it worked out great to work with both opportunities, and it made me take time to do a philanthropy unit with the others. Then the students came back and had to present to the class, and the class had a rubric on what we thought would make good quality assurance on was it accurate, was this you know, story told in a way that people could understand it, um, was it entertaining, was it engaging so that you wanted to um, watch it. So anyways, they went through the quality assurance, and then the students gave the feedback and then the teams went back and put their that feedback in. So it was a great way for them to learn, to let, check their egos at the door and really accept feedback from peers and how we as a class are going to make these the best projects possible because we as a class are turning these in. It's not team A or team B, it is as a whole class. This is representing us. Um, so that way we kept the buy-in as a whole class, even though the reality was I couldn't have and do a good job of having 10 of these projects going at the same time. Uh, I love that. I love all the skills that these students learned outside of personal finance, all the really life skills that yeah. contribute to this project besides just the understanding the unbanked or the personal finance side of it. So oh, it it was a great opportunity to do cross-curricular. Sorry to interrupt. I just no. loved all of the ways and the ability to bring in creative. A lot of the students who are very artistic mm -hmm. to be able to shine in the class too. So that was really nice. Maybe they struggle with some of the um, vocabulary and just have mm -hmm. our you know, math or any of those things allowed them to shine. So it was a great opportunity. Yeah, I'm sure they had a lot of pride and it's a, uh, it's uh, worth to say you tied for second. Thank and you. And now, what did your class do with that prize money? And I oh, had let seven. you say how much it was. Yes, we got $750. The students were absolutely thrilled. They had their picture taken for the newspaper, for the district website. Um, it made it to the newsletter, to all the parents, and they are beyond proud of it because the students that the team that won had never entered any kind of school competition or anything like that it was it just turned out to be phenomenal but as a class they decided to enter another competition mm -hmm. and we went to a state conference and so we got to go overnight into a hotel and stay there because the school district wouldn't pay for all of those things, but we used the funds to pay for the rest of the travel. So none of the students had to come up with any money to participate and the entire class got to go. And it turned out that only two of my students in this class had ever been 
um, out of Spokane or done anything for the school of traveling. And when you saw their excitement, their anxiety, their joy, and how it lasted impacted them. So this project impacted us the entire school year in such positive ways that these students have high school memories they will never forget now. That is wonderful. I absolutely love that story. And I didn't know all of that. That's wonderful. Uh, so what kind of future contests relating to banking do you think your students might be interested in? You know, one of the things that I think might be really good is if we could have it where the students did some kind of a community project or community presentations mm -hmm. to either elementary kids, to parents, to, um, you know, it could even be people getting close to retiring or college grads and what to do with student debt. There's so many different areas they could take it, but having to give into their community and do some kind of a presentation, which then could be covered by the newspapers and the news, and they, you know, have to learn to give to the community, which doesn't require them to have the technology and the tools of all the cameras and the sound and everything else, because right. um, we lucked out and I was able to get that from another department. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to use it. And luckily I got some guidance on that, but I'm wondering if having to do a film might limit some of the schools that can participate and that would open the door for all. I'm really passionate about equal access to everybody. Yeah, I appreciate the feedback and we'll definitely take it back to the Bank on Washington board. Thank you for that. So Lisa, I'd like you to tell people, I know a little about you and your passion for personal finance, but why don't you give us an example of the journey you've had getting to this place of teaching personal finance? Oh, thank you, Tracy, for letting me share. Um, I, I actually didn't plan on this. I was a software engineer who my job as an engineer was in the financial industry. And it was while I was writing software programs for the financial industry that I began to realize how many Americans didn't have good financial literacy and what all that meant. And then as a mom, I was helping my kids with their own math and I realized my passion for teaching math. So I then went into my second career as a high school math teacher and that's how I got into teaching. It was as a high school math teacher and you're supposed to give word problems and all that relevancy. I was found that most of the time students had zero interest in word problems, but when I gave ones that had to do with personal finance, the whole class ate it up. And in fact, some of the students who struggled in math actually did better than the students who were really you know, strong in math. So I then began to realize the need to teach that. So I got CT endorsed so that I could, with my school district, then offer a third year math course in personal finance. And that just took off my passion when I saw the interest students had in what they you know, need to learn and their appetite for learning it um, against, again, all eco-sociological groups engage in it and have something to learn. Whether a student is going to go straight into the workforce, drops out of high school, heaven forbid, or they're going to go get a postgraduate degree. They need to understand how all those choices uh, affect them and how important it is to understand roommates and yeah. use cars. Um, I try to bring a lot of guest speakers into the classroom, which students really, it's important to know with, you know, buying a used car sounds great, but what, so you bring in some mechanics that help them understand how to pick out the right car and um, along with learning how to finance it. So I just find that the engagement is huge and the blessing I have now after 16 years of teaching is we're still running into students that say, I'm using everything you taught me about it. I just had that happen yesterday um, when I was picking up some food with my grandkids and I ran into students. She goes, if it wasn't for you, I would have been in trouble with COVID. Oh. And it just meant the world. I love that. And they are very lucky to have you. So lastly, I want to know how your students respond to personal finance lessons, as well as right now in this digital world we're living in where we're, you're digitally teaching. And tell me how that's going for you. 
So students respond, like I kind of alluded to first off, because I can talk too much. Um, they love personal finance. I'm so passionate about it. They love it. It's really important to, along with talking about long-term investment and long-term savings and goals, to bring the lessons really close and dear to their heart right now. Moving out, what does it take to buy a car? What are different summer jobs they can get as a kid? And what should looking, you know, money, saving money look like now? And then what's it going to look like later on? So you have to make it something they can use today to keep them engaged. Uh -huh, right. We'll be looking at right it right away. Um, and as far as the COVID and teaching online, my personal finance class is the class that I'm getting almost every student to engage in every lesson. It's great. Uh, classes, unfortunately, no. Um, but the beauty is, is I have taken all of my personal finance lessons um, right now and centered them around COVID-19 and the statistics we have there. What can we do to improve? How can we communicate? How can we stay healthier? And so the students are, it's relevant to what they're going through right mm -hmm. now. And it's much easier to do that than with an Algebra two class or a Geometry class. Uh, so that, you know, has made it very important. You can do it pretty well digitally, the personal finance. It's not the same as being in class mm -hmm. and having those classroom discussions that right. really level the playing field. I know that it's not the same, but um, I feel like they're getting something through it and they mm -hmm. definitely can see how important it is to learn it. My guess is they're also involving their families now that we've got a lot of parents without work and, and they're all at home and maybe these discussions also will benefit the whole family. Yeah, well, and I have gotten a lot of, a couple of students who've emailed me say, my parents have this going on. What should we do with our stimulus check? How should we work it? Or I didn't get my stimulus check. Why didn't I get it? Or why did that person? So I've been able to give them some immediate feedback on how does you know, apply for unemployment, how to use their stimulus check, how to prepare. Um, so it's been a great opportunity to connect with the community. And yes, the kids are sharing these lessons with their families. Yeah, well, this is just great, Lisa. And hopefully this conversation will be able to put out and other people will be able to learn and maybe help other educators uh, get some ideas on how relevant they are to some of these conversations with their students. And we're just going to keep keep growing and expanding our program and I'm thrilled to death to always have you there working side by side with us and so now we're going to play your video so that everyone gets a chance to see the video and I'm going to say once again thank you so much for taking the time to share all this with us. Well thank you Tracy for the opportunity and thank you to you and to FEP for everything you do for our students. Um, you guys are the ones that are help changing it and definitely make my teaching job easier because you help me with staying with relevant and new information. So thank you. Uh, thanks Lisa. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi there. I'm George. And I'm Alex. We'd like to talk to you on behalf of Bank on Washington. That's right, George, because you know what they say about money. What's that, Alex? Money talks. Are you finding yourself in banks struggling to find a financial institute that fits your needs and is willing to work with you? Don't worry. Being unbanked is a problem for many people for one reason or another. Whether it's past financial issues such as having no credit, not being able to afford a college education, saving up for a house, or buying that dream boat you've always wanted. This can make people feel judged, marginalized, and left struggling to take the next step they need for financial security. Helping the unbanked finance institution is where Bank on Washington swoops in to save the day. Bank on Washington is an organization that helps people that are unbanked, whether it's getting a college education, buying your first house, or finally getting that dream boat of yours. So in other words, Bank on Washington is the solution to your unbanked problems. For more information, make sure to visit Bank on Washington's website at bankonwashington.org. Bank, Bank on Washington, your financial solution. solution.